distortion that's over two times greater. That's a major, major factor, and we're seeing it three and four times greater. Now, what's even more troubling is when you look at how children's deaths are being covered. Because children's deaths, of course, are especially tragic to so many of us. Almost everyone throughout the world feels that children are illegitimate targets of strife. Their deaths are uh, intolerable. There's something that the world should prevent. So it's very important to see how our media are reporting on the large numbers of children that have been killed in this conflict. Now again, the first thing that we always should ask, and I hope we'll always remember to do this everywhere, is how many children were killed among both populations. When we hear a, 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 a number among one population anywhere in the world, let's always ask, well, what about the other population? I want the full information. So again, we had the very sad job of looking at how many children were killed in this conflict in the first year and then again last year. We discovered that in the first year, 28 Israeli children had been tragically killed. And we discovered that 131 Palestinian children had been tragically killed during that first year. Now let's look at 2004, a period of relative calm, as our media were telling us. Well, again, we find a difference. Uh, it's very significant. We learned that 2004, eight Israeli children had been tragically killed by Palestinians, and we learned that 179 Palestinian children had been tragically killed by Israelis. In other words, a rate is Palestinian children were being killed last year at a rate 22 times greater than Israeli children. Now here's an example of what the New York Times covered in that first year. We found that the New York Times covered Israeli children's deaths at a rate 6.8 times greater than Palestinian children's deaths. They reported on 125 percent of Israeli children's deaths. And for that same year, they reported on 18 percent of Palestinian children's deaths. Let's look at what they did in 2004. In 2004, we found that the disparity had grown even greater. And the New York Times reported on Israeli children's deaths at a rate over sec seven times greater than they had reported on Palestinian children's deaths. Then you look at the, the TV networks, and they make the New York Times almost look good. Uh, the television networks, the, the disparity in coverage of children's deaths is truly off the charts, which of course is the name of our reports. And as, as we describe our reports, you'll see how that phrase continues to fit the media coverage off the charts. So we found that the networks had covered once again Israeli children's deaths at far greater rates. And remember, we're not even measuring how much time was spent on each death, the wording that was used, uh, how much personal information was given. I have no doubt that that would increase this differential even far greater than I'm describing. We're just talking about a death even having been reported or having been mentioned and finding enormous distortion there. We found that, that in the first year of covering children's deaths, ABC covered Israeli children's deaths at a rate 13.8 times greater than Palestinian children's deaths. We discovered that CBS covered Israeli deaths at a rate 6.4 times greater than Palestinian children's deaths. We discovered that NBC covered Israeli children's deaths at a rate about 12 and a half times greater than Palestinian children's deaths. These are all children. Their deaths are all tragic. Why are we hearing about one population's deaths at a rate up to 13 times greater than we're hearing about another population's deaths? As Americans, we need full information, not information about only one population. Then we look at what the networks did in 2004. In 2004, we found that, again, this, this immense distortion was going on. We discovered that ABC covered Israeli children's deaths at a rate nine times greater. CBS covered Israeli children's deaths at a rate almost 13 times greater. And NBC covered Israeli children's deaths at a rate approximately 10 times greater. Once again, a huge differential based on ethnicity in the reporting that we're getting from our media. Another way of looking at these deaths is in the following charts.
where we show on one side uh, the Israeli column is in blue and you'll see that the top half of the column is a, a different shade of blue. Those are the repetitions of deaths that were reported in our media where that makes the blue column, which is the Israeli death column, look significantly higher than the amount of death that was actually going on on the ground. Then you compare that to the red column, the Palestinian column, and you'll notice that the top half, far, far more than half, I'm afraid, of that column is a vast empty column of Palestinian deaths that were never even reported once, making the Palestinian death column look far smaller than it was in reality. Now, of course, though that empty column is full of tragedy. Every one of those children or men or women, whoever was, was killed, is still being mourned by their families. And yet their deaths were invisible to the American population, whose tax money Israel is using. That's why we have to know these facts. Another very revealing way of looking at these deaths is to chart them chronologically. Uh, in the following chart, the first line that you'll see is how the New York Times reported the deaths, the Israeli deaths. Now in the next line, we'll show you the number of Israeli deaths that had actually occurred during that first year. Now the next line will show how Palestinian deaths were reported in that first year. And the final line will be the number of Palestinian deaths that actually had occurred during that year. As you'll see in time after time after time, the curves all follow the Israeli death rate rather than the Palestinian reported deaths following their own death rate. This is startling to me and I, I suspect will be startling to many people. Now I'd like to just mention a few other studies in addition to these major media that I've just described. Many people perhaps listen to NPR, to National Public Radio, and, and uh, consider them considerably better. In fact, a number of years ago, there was a boycott and a great deal of pressure by pro-Israel organizations against NPR, saying that NPR was pro-Palestinian. Well, another organization, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, FAIR, a very respected media, media watchdog organization, did a similar study. Uh, actually, their study preceded our studies of NPR's coverage of deaths. The researcher who did this excellent work, Seth Ackerman, discovered that NPR was reporting Israeli children's deaths at a rate of about 90 percent, and it was reporting Palestinian children's deaths at a rate of about 20 percent. Now does this kind of reporting continue around the country? What about smaller newspapers around the country? We found that typically the reporting actually gets even worse in other publications. Partly because many of the, the deaths of Palestinians are reported in the, the very last paragraphs of newspaper reports. And so naturally when a newspaper is cutting uh, a long news report, they cut out a lot of the Palestinian deaths. In some cases, for example, with the San Francisco Chronicle, which used to be my newspaper, we discovered cases, however, where there were deaths reported of Palestinians, in, in one case of a nine-year-old boy who had been killed. The death was reported in the news story, as I recall, in about the third paragraph in the wire service report. The San Francisco Chronicle foreign desk had cut out that paragraph of the report that they printed in their newspaper. So we've discovered, for example, with a six-month study we did of the San Francisco Chronicle headline uh, coverage of this conflict, that they were reporting on Israeli children's deaths at a rate 30 times greater than they were reporting on Palestinian children's deaths. Another small newspaper, also in California, that's where I'm, I'm from, but I'm finding these are typical. We've done these studies of Connecticut and Oregon as well. But for example, with the San Jose Mercury newspaper, we did a study of their, their front page coverage 